Hello and welcome to Tips from IBM's US Communication Server. My name is David T. Britt and I work in IBM Communication Server Level 2. Today we're going to look at how to diagnose uh, network performance problems using a packet trace. So this presentation is going to describe how to format out a SysTSPDA packet trace to understand what is the source of a performance problem. In this particular example we're going to be looking at a slowdown in an FTP data transfer. There are a few things that you should know before you want to view this presentation. Uh, the first is how to take a pack trace. We're going to be working with a trace that has already been taken. taken. And for reference, you can go to this URL. It's uh, techdoc129.2013, and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions for various different types of component tracing, including the SysTCBDA component. We also expect that you have some basic knowledge of using IPCS. So we'll be starting today from our, from our primary ISPF panel. Uh, the first thing you'll want to do is enter into your IPCS environment. For me, that is the I option. And once in the IPCS primary option menu, we'll make sure we have the right packet trace file selected. In my case, my dataset name is in fact dtbrit.slow.ftp, but if that is not correct for you, you would obviously want to change that here. So now that we know we're using the right file, we'll want to go ahead and enter into our analysis section. For me, that's option two. And from the analysis panel, we want to enter into the traces panel, which is option seven, and then into the ctrace panel, which is option one. And we will be displaying this trace. From the display parameters, there are a lot of different fields we can fill out, but I have a very short trace, and so we don't need to do any filtering. The component for a packet trace is sysTCPDA, and I always like to look at the timestamps and the local time in which the trace was taken, so I set this field to L. You can also change your report type to full if you wanted to see each individual packet, but in this particular example, we're going to be using an IPCS exit called session, and that will override anything you put into the report type field. Now you'll notice that the IPCS command that we're using to format the trace is ctrace comp sysTCPDA local short options session. From the command line, you can enter S, and that will begin formatting out our trace for us. Now the session formatter creates uh, session reports for each connection in the trace, which we can use to quickly determine exactly what's going on. Now if you're familiar with FTP, you know that there are two different connections that are involved in any FTP transfer. The first is the control connection, on which messages are passed back and forth between the client and server, and the second is the data connection across which the data is actually transferred. Since this is a performance problem in the data connection, we can skip the control connection. And we can see that this first report listed is for the, the control connection by the fact that port 21 is being used. So we scroll down through that, and now we're looking at the data connection. Because both of the ports, the local and remote port, are ephemeral, we know that this is a passive data connection. But you may also see in an active data connection a port of 20 being used. Because this is a performance problem, one of the first things you want to look at are your timestamps. We can, we can see that the total duration of this connection was 3 minutes and 7 seconds. That will be important as we go look at other fields in, the, in this report. So we scroll down to our uh, packet analysis. It tells us the total number of packets and the types of packets that have been sent on this particular connection. The, the in-order data acknowledgments, duplicate acts, things of that nature are not as interesting but as you continue to scroll down, we see something that is. We have 246 retransmissions on this connection and 196 out-of-order packets. That gives us some idea of what might be causing our, our data slowdown in this particular transfer. We can also go on to the next section, the time spent on block, and see how much time during the total transfer was spent processing these different types of packets. So if we look at our retransmissions, we see that a minute and 37 seconds was spent processing these. That is over one half of the entire uh, connection duration. So we know that, that this is probably going to be the source of our slowdown. As we continue to scroll down, we see uh, that we're about to enter in, into a table of all the different packets uh, in a summarized format. The different, the different fields we see in this table are the TCP header, which tells us the different TCP flags that were set in, the, in each packet. Uh, we see the I.O. column, which tells us uh, if the packet was inbound or outbound. And we see this flag column. Now, this column is not necessarily TCP flags, but rather flags that the session formatter has set based on its analysis of the session. And that will become important as we go through our, our uh, analysis of this particular connection. We also have columns for the sequence and act number. Uh, they're not as important for our purposes this time, but they are important for other types of analysis. And we have the data column, which shows us how much data was contained in each packet, and the delta time, which tells us how much time has passed between two packets. And this will also be important, especially for performance 
uh, analyses. So the first three packets we see are the SIN, the AXIN, and the ACK, which is the three-way handshake for any TCP connection. Uh, we're not as concerned with that. Uh, then we begin, we expect to see data beginning to flow, and we do see that in this first packet here with a total data size of 1368. Immediately, we do see a problem on the connection, and we can tell by using the flag column, which shows this packet is out of order, and we know that from the, the lowercase o in this column. And what that means is that TCP IP, uh, the local TCPIP stack was expecting a packet with a particular sequence and ACK number, and the packet that actually arrived seems to be beyond that packet, meaning that there's a packet missing. So the response from the local stack is to send what is called a duplicate ACK. And we know that this is a duplicate act because it's got the lowercase u in that f field. What that does is signal to the sending set stack that one packet is missing. And using the sequence and act numbers, the sending stack can determine which packet needs to be retransmitted. We do see that packet eventually retransmitted further down here, and that is indicated by a lowercase r in the f field. But we also see that a delay of 2.6 seconds is incurred waiting for that packet to be retransmitted. Now, if this were a one-time occurrence, it would not cause much of a performance problem. But as we scroll through the trace, we begin to see multiple occurrences of out-of-order packets and subsequent retransmissions. And each time this happens, we have longer delays. Um, this one happens to be one and a half minutes, or one and a half seconds. But as we continue scrolling down, we see that most of these delays happen to, to be between one to two seconds. So now we know why the, the slowdown is occurring. Uh, the packets that are not arriving are causing some delays as the two TCPIP stacks have to renegotiate in order to get all the data sent. The next step in diagnosing this problem would be to do some diagnostics on the stack that is sending the data. What, what you would want to do is ensure that the stack is actually sending the packet that is missing. And if this is a ZOS system, you can do that by running a packet trace on that system as well. If it is not a ZOS system, you can run a sniffer right next to the system and then compare that to a packet trace taken on the local stack to see if the packets that are missing actually show up in the sniffer, sniffer trace. If they don't, we know that the system isn't sending it. If they do, we know that the packet is getting dropped somewhere in between the two hosts. You can continue taking sniffer traces moving iteratively closer to the mainframe until you can find which node the packet disappears on. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this session informational and enjoyable. We hope to be providing more tips from IBM's U.S. communications server in the future.